from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Well, welcome back to the Cube and our IBM Think initiative. And today, a fascinating subject with a dramatic shift that's going on in the Middle East and specifically in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. There is a significant partnership that has just recently been launched called Saudi, which is the Saudi Arabian Real Interbank Express. And it basically is a, a dramatic move to make the kingdom cashless. And, and IBM is very much at the center of that. With me to talk about that role is Haji Cisse, who at IBM is the MEA head of uh, payments which of course is Middle East and Africa. Uh, Haji, good to have you with us so all the way from Dubai. Good to see you today. The pleasure is all mine. Good, well, thank you for joining us. And let's let's talk about this initiative. Um, first off, the, the problem, or at least the challenge that IBM and its partners are trying to solve and now how you're going about it. So let's just paint that 30,000 foot level, if you will, then we'll dive in a little deeper. Yeah. So um, if you look at the uh, country, Saudi, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and in particular the region, Middle East and Africa, we are very cash driven society. And um, this provides lots of challenges in terms of uh, government point of view, business's point of view, and even the consumer point of view. Uh, the cash transaction is becoming less and less more traceable. You are less likely to see where the cash is going, where the cash is coming from. Maintaining the cash also is becoming more and more expensive in terms of security, in terms of uh, uh, recycling the cash, holding the cash, transacting the cash. All of that has been taken into consideration and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, with the help of the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, has a visionary vision 2030 to be put in place that would enable them to revolutionize the entire financial sector. There's a segment within that called the FSDP, the Financial Sector uh, Development Program. Mm -hmm. And that program, within that program, they have a goal to uh, develop a, a digital platform that will enhance and uh, that will enhance and enable the society to go through a more cashless uh, uh, society and also help define a full end-to-end -end digital KYC uh, in, environment for, for, the, for the kingdom. So, I mean, when you think about the scale of this, I mean, it's almost mind blowing in a way, because in many cases, we've been talking about with various of your colleagues at IBM, different initiatives that involve an organization or involve maybe a, a, a more regional partnership or something like that. This is national, right? This is every banking institution in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, businesses, government entities. Um, I mean, if you would share with me some of the complexity of this in terms of a project of that scale and, and trying to bring together these disparate systems that ha all have different kind of legacy uh, overhang, if you will, right? And, and now you're trying to modernize everybody uh, moving toward the same goal in 2030. I think it's mind blowing. Yeah, it is, it is, John. And um, if you look at the complexity if I, if I may speak a little bit about how complex it is, um, let's start with the team. Um, the team has been a, a full diverse team. We have 10 different nationalities uh, from that. We have a um, team from America, Canada, um, Egypt, um, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE, um, uh, China, UK, Pakistan, India. I mean, you name it. We, we, we have a, a, the whole globe uh, pretty much uh, uh, every single uh, region. Australia also was there. Uh, we, we, we had the team of that magnitude. In addition to that, uh, as you rightfully stated, we're not building a system for a particular company or a particular industry. It is for the entire country, all the banks of Saudi Arabia, the 11 national banks and the 12 additional uh, international banks that are there the global corporates such as the telco corporation the uh, uh the uh, oil corporation that are there all of them needs to be onboarded into this including the 17 million or 20 some million population that are there now um the um the the, the key success factor that we have is that our partners mastercard and saudi payment mm -hmm. uh, we have mandated ourselves 
not to divide ourselves into three teams. We have to go with this as one single team. This was the mojo of the, of the project. This is what made us successful. We didn't differentiate between IBM, MasterCard, or Saudi payment. We all went together and addressing every single challenge as a team with the three different layers. And that's what helped us becoming successful in this engagement. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the initiative specifically then in terms of the technology that's, that's driving this. Uh, we talk a lot about the digital transformation that's occurring in the world. And again, it's kind of a catch all phrase, but this truly is a, a almost this magical transformation that you're going through. So um, how did you address the various workloads? What's going to be done where and how and by whom? Um, and then this integration that has to go on with that. Not only are you centralizing a lot of these functions, but you also have to distribute them to institutions across the kingdom. So if you would share a little bit of insight on that. Yeah. So if you look, if you look at the architecture uh, um, that, that we have put in place, it's really a very um, agile and flexible architecture in a way that um, we have put a central entity, which is the uh, payment hub that, is, uh, that will handle all the payment solution that is there. And we put a flexibility for all the consumers because we have different banks. If you look at the banks uh, industry, we have banks that are very mature, banks that are medium mature, that are on the medium level of maturity, and some that are absolutely not mature at all. And um, with this solution that we have to get involved, we have to be ISO 222 enabled, which is the new language that Swift will be using. Mm -hmm. Now, the infrastructure that we put in place have enabled that flexibility. Otherwise, we're never going to be successful. You cannot come to a country and say, everybody needs to be on board into this language. Everybody needs to be operating this way. No, that will never going to work. We have taken that into consideration from the beginning. We knew this would be a challenge and we put different tools within IBM that we have put in place in order to go and mitigate those, such as the WTX, which is the Webster Transformation Exchanger that enables us to transform messages from and to ISO 222 or to ISO, from to ISO 222 to any type of format that the customer have. And here the customer will be the banks. So we, we in, encapsulate that. Another element, another challenge that we have is on the onboarding aspect. A lot of banks, again, depending on the maturity level, we have to be ready with different environment for them to be uh, to catch up with us. Not everybody will be able to onboard on the same time. So by leveraging our RTVS solution, the Rational Test Service Virtualization, it enables us to mitigate, to, to, uh, to virtualize an entire ecosystem Make it look like it is uh, it is a, a physical environment for the banks to use as a testing, as opposed to in the normal circumstances, purchasing additional hardware, additional software, additional component in doing that. Here we're just virtualizing it for those who are ready for a system testing, those who are ready for a performance test, those who are ready for any type of non-functional requirement testing aspect. So these tools and this mechanism have helped us with our complex system integration methodology to mitigate this complexity and make it easy for the uh, ecosystem to be onboarded and, and, and make us successful in this deal. You raise a, a really interesting point in terms of the maturity of different levels of technology within the banking institutions there. Uh, you've got, you know, I'm sure some, as you point out, some very small enterprises, right? Very small towns, very small institutions whose systems might not be as sophisticated or as mature, basically. So ultimately, how, how do you tie all that in together so that uh, there might be a very large institution that has a very robust set of infrastructure and, and processes in place, and then you've got it communicating with a very small institution uh, you've got to be a great translator, right? I mean, IBM does here uh, yeah. because you don't have them sometimes basically talking the same language, literally in this case. Yes, uh, absolutely. And this, and this is really our forte. We are the system integrators of choice in this region. And um, this goes without saying because of our platform and our processes and our people that we put together. Um, if you look at this, this example again on the, on the integration layer, we have enabled two lines of communication, two channels uh, for, for, uh, for, for the community. 
They could either go for API if they are very mature, or they could go through MQ, uh, which is a low level of, uh, I won't say low level, but in the old fashioned way of communicating. Mm -hmm. So on that aspect, not only they have two protocol to get to us, they can use any message format that they want, as long as we agreed and we have a handshake on the language that they're gonna be using. And this, uh, this, this, this integration layer, uh, the system integration that we have built up enabled us to have that flexibility on, on both entities. So this was just launched. I mean, literally just launched. What's your timeline in, in order to, to have full or I guess reasonable implementation? Uh, that, that's a great question, actually. Uh, uh, the average is 24 to 30 months. We have broken the world record. We have implemented this magnificent uh, uh, solution within 18 months. It's actually 17 months and a half uh, of implementation. Uh, we, uh, with the scope that we have, uh, that is onboarding all the banks, um, having deferred net settlement, uh, having the ISO 222, uh, billing solution on it. We had the um, 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 we had we had the billing. We had the dispute management. We had the uh, single proxies. Uh, we had the debit cap and limit management and the portal solution. So we have all of that all of these components within 17 and a half months. This breaks the world record of implementing of implementing an instant payment solution globally. Yeah. What we'll call Guinness and and, uh, and get you in the book then. How about that? It, it is a remarkable achievement, it really is. Well, and and you know, and you've talked about some of the the values here in terms of uh, reduced transaction costs, uh, greater stability, greater security, greater transactional relationships. Uh, I, I manage market liquidity, right? Um, uh, in in your thought, I mean, tie all that together for our viewers in terms of impact and what you think this kind of partnership is going to create in terms of changing the way basically financial services are delivered in the kingdom? So it will, it will, it will change a lot. And the impact in the economy, um, like I said, is, is going to be on a threefold. Uh, one, from a consumer point of view, you'll be able to save time in, in, in uh, making uh, your transactions. You will be um, able to try to trace your transactions uh, and being able to have enough data to understand how you're managing your budget and your and your uh, and your transaction. Mm -hmm. From a business point of view, you will be able to um, uh, save yourself from theft. I mean, again, having cash in your business um, uh, it would intend to having more people coming in and, and stealing them from you, either your employees or your or, or your customers or anybody else. But having a cashless uh, business, nobody can literally steal your money. They can only steal your phone or steal your, your gadget that you have for that aspect. Uh, managing and maintaining cash also is, is a big problem. Now, from a government point of view, this is where it gets very interesting, uh, especially for Saudi Arabia. The, um, uh, the taxation of, of the employees or the zakat payment of it, the traceability of all of that and being able to trace it and being able to say, okay, how much tax you will need to pay by end of the year without you doing the, the calculation, that information is already provided to the government, right? And uh, as a central bank, the printing of cash, maintaining cash, uh, storing cash, securing cash, all of those costs will be gone away. This is why the country want to go into a cashless society. Well, it, it, it's a fascinating uh, endeavor and certainly congratulations on that front. We're talking about real-time payments and um, really making a significant difference in, in how services are delivered in the kingdom. And Haji, I certainly have appreciated your time here today and talking about it and, and wish you all the best down the road. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Really appreciate it. All right, Thank so you. we're talking about the, the journey to a cashless society in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and what Saudi is doing and IBM is doing to make that happen. I'm John Wallace and thanks for joining us here on theCUBE.